Hello chess fans! In today's video, I'm going to go over my round 7, 8, and 9 game. So in round 7, I was against around a 2000-ist rated opponent, and I knew I had to win this game because I'd already lost two other games, as I'd previously mentioned, and I think my opponent either had one more point than me at this point, or they had the same amount of points as me. It was quite a while ago. So in this game, I knew that I'd previously played this opponent, and after e4, c5, knight f3, uh, knight c6, bishop b5, we had this position after knight f6, and back when I played him the last time, I really had no idea what to do here, and I think I ended up winning the game, but I don't really fully remember it. And anyways, I think this knight f6 setup is honestly kind of underrated. It's not that bad for black, and it's kind of a way to play for an interesting position. So instead, in this game, I decided to go for knight c3 because I had a specific idea in mind in case he repeats this knight f6. Now, I had no idea if he was going to repeat the knight f6, but he ended up doing it in the game, and after knight c6, here I played bishop f b5 and here really you can you should either go g6 e6 or knight d4 here i kind of eliminated this possibility of knight f6 because of the fact that after knight f6 i can go for takes here which i think even though the engine says is equal i think is very 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 unpleasant for black so after d takes here my opponent does this to keep control of the d4 square also open up their bishop here i play this move d3 so d3 simply defend the pawn. And this is the last point where my opponent can sort of go back to something that they know. So here, maybe black should go for this move e5. Now, if e5, I was planning to go for f4. And after takes takes, we have this interesting position. Or after e5, I could simply transpose back and I've, you know, we would get some sort of interesting position here too. It's possible here I should have gone for this move f4 even. But after d3... My opponent goes for this g6 here, and this is simply inaccurate because of the fact that now I get this f4 setup. And the idea is that I didn't want to commit to my knight on f3 yet, because now this f4 pawn is doing a lot here. So I guess my opponent should have used the advantage, taken advantage of my move order and immediately played e5 here. But they weren't familiar with the idea, and honestly, neither was I. So here after f4, my opponent plays bishop g7. Now, white controls a lot of space here, and this bishop is finding it difficult to develop so after knight f3 my opponent decides to get rid of the bishop immediately with this move uh, bishop g4 here i castle my opponent castles i develop my piece here he goes b6 and already we can see that the position is kind of really bad for black like what does black really do what are their plans ideally they want to attack on the queen side because i'm going to attack on the king side but that's not so easy and now here here's where um the engine kind of doesn't like my move that much here maybe you should go for h3 and after takes takes um, you just have a very nice position as white because they don't even have the bishop here anymore. But I don't really like this because when we go h3, our queen can no longer swing to h3 or our rook can swing to h3. And you'll see why that matters in a sec. So here I went queen e1 and this is a classic grand prix idea. The idea is to go queen h4. So here my opponent goes for queen c7, sort of preparing this e5 move. I went for queen f4. And here they have to pretty much get rid of this. For example, if they do something nonchalantly in some positions, I'm threatening e5, the knight moves and then take this. For example, I could even move the knight away and then go for h3, g4 here. So they should probably exchange pieces because they're getting attacked. Here I went for rook takes f3, and here they made a huge blunder. Their idea was to play e5 after this, but here I have f5, and your bishop's locked out of the game, and my pieces are looking very nice. And here we can see why not playing h3 was so good. Here my opponent went for queen d6, looking for b5. I went rook f1, so I'm threatening some sort of ideas like this. b5. Here I went. F here I probably should go for g4, g5, and uh, f6 which should be winning on the spot because then i can go for rook h3 after but instead i went for bishop g5 now threatening takes and if he takes here i win so for example let's say he plays a dumb move like this after here i would win a piece so he doesn't have to make all those exchanges but yeah i would win a piece after that so instead of that he went for this move queen d4 check i played king h1 my opponent went knight h5 and here i went for f6 the bishop has to move back and yet here you still have to be a little bit careful. For example, after knight h5, uh, if you play a nonchalant move like knight d1, maybe black can get out of the way with something like f6. This is sort of his threat here. Now I'm still winning here, but I just have to be careful not to allow f6. So that's why I went for f6 myself. After g4, I was also worried about f6. But apparently here, I kind of just missed that I have this tempo. But instead of that, I went for f6 just to stop f6 outright. Here my opponent went for bishop h8. And here, take a few seconds to see if you can find the best move. Here, I was thinking about g4, but I was really worried about this move knight f4. And after takes something here, here, h5, if I take this, maybe he can go for queen takes f6. So I can't take that. And here, I could take here, but 
again, I really just didn't think I need to do any of these complications. So why not just go rook h3 first so that after g4, he can no longer move anything. And actually, it was in this position that my opponent resigned. So yeah, this was a really nice game. I think I spent like a total of two minutes or something on this game. I spent like 10-ish minutes or something. So yeah, a very nice game. I quickly beat a 2000. And yeah, just a game to feel good because I, I played some bad games in this tournament and this game made me feel a little bit better about myself because I thought I played really well here. According to the engine, I played perfect and I took advantage of my opponent's mistakes in the opening. So yeah, clearly here in this opening, to punish my play here, probably black has to go for something like after takes takes. This e5 move is quite critical to black's position. Okay, now let's go to round eight. Oops, sorry. So this was another game that I was against the guy in the tournament who has lost all his games previously and I was really tired and it's not because my previous round was hard so my round seven game was quite easy because you guys just saw it I didn't really spend that much time but I was kind of tired because we would played a lot of games up to this point and I just really wanted to get it over quickly with he played e5, I played knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, d6. So yeah, this is what lower rated players really usually do against Aru Lopez. They usually be, think like, oh, he might be threatening to take, take, and then take my pawn. So I should probably defend my pawn. But usually this is a mistake because then I get d4. And now I'm using this pin. Here on bishop d7, I went for knight c3, takes, takes. Yeah, here, you should probably not move here because then they'd misplace your knight. And they get this a6 move for free or c6 move for free. So I took here first. They take back. I took here. And now here they went for this move long castles and you know for any beginners out there take a few seconds to see if you can find the winning move for white i'll give you five seconds five four three two one yeah pause the video if you didn't see it queen takes a seven yeah just a free pawn usually when you castle it's why you usually shouldn't castle queen side especially when there's a lot of pieces in the center here maybe instead knight f6 could have been played and here i was planning to go for bishop f4 and castles queen side for example bishop b7 castles queen side and here if castles king side i was planning to go for f3 g4 g5 and yeah so on so i would be winning but instead of that he castled and after i take he went for c6 and yeah here i kind of missed the easy win i kind of missed this move i just didn't i guess i didn't see it for example after queen c7 knight b6 he just has to give up his queen so yeah that was a very easy win i missed that instead i went bishop e3 with the threat to go bishop here and then mate my opponent went for b5. Here I gave queen, eight. oops, not queen there. That would be a huge blunder. Here I went queen a8, king c7, queen a5, king c8. Here I went bishop b6 because I'm attacking the rook. And they have no time to defend the rook because I'm threatening queen a8 mate. Here my opponent moved the rook out of the way. And here I played queen a8 with checkmate. So this game, I literally did not think a single move. So it was very nice to get this win. And again, I think... Uh, it's a team event, right? So my opponent's teammates were looking at the game after like, you know, my opponent spent maybe a minute and a half. I spent zero time. Like there was literally maybe two or three seconds off my clock and the game was over. So this game was again, just like very surprising. I didn't really expect to win this bat this much, but clearly my opponent didn't really know the opening. And yeah, you should just generally be careful when castling queenside. It's kind of a risky thing to do. So in the final game, I was around against uh, 1100. Now, this opponent is heavily underrated. I'd say they are closer to 15, 1600. And at this point, I think I had two more points than this person or one more point than this person. I think two more points than this person. And so they were not a weak player. And I think they I think they had a very decent online rating. I think they said that their online blitz rating was like 2000. So definitely not a too weak a player. So we got, we got the modern defense, and here I went for bishop g7, knight f3, d6, knight c3. Here I went for knight c6. My opponent went for bishop f4. Yeah, bishop f4 is kind of weird. Usually, most players here would either go g3, and I'll cover a game I had in that in the future. And this move, d5. And d5 is probably the best move in here, maybe knight b8 or something like that, or knight e5 to trade pieces because you're down on space. So the idea is that you want to attack the center later, and that white is kind of overcoming in the center but instead bishop f4 developing makes some sense but kind of doesn't address this pressure so here i probably i i saw the best move so the best move here is to go for the center fork trick knight takes d4 and the idea is after knight takes d4 you have e5 with this fork oops sorry and here they'd have to defend with bishop e3 and after takes takes knight f6 i saw all this and here i was calculating e4 and apparently actually after c5 black's much better for example, after bishop e3, something like knight g4, and we're going to either double their pawns or put a lot of pressure on their position. And for example, here, 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 and then queen f6 is very nice for black, apparently. So 
yeah, I didn't see any of this. I just saw this position after e4, and I just really didn't like it because we've traded a piece of miners. They have the space advantage, and for example, if I castle, I was right about the evaluation. White is much better here. So instead of that, I went for a knight f6. I just wanted to keep pieces on the board. My opponent went for e3, and here I went for bishop g4. Yeah, bishop g4 again, probably a bad move. Here, maybe I should just castle. For example, after bishop e2, I can go for this knight h5 move, and after bishop g5, I can just look to pick up the bishop here. Simple enough, and this should position should be about equal. But instead of that, I went for bishop g4, and after bishop e2 castles, my opponent played h3, and here I kind of realized that, yeah, I did not play that well. So I went bishop d7, yeah. Clearly here, again, the best move should be takes, takes, and something like e5 or knight d7 to prepare e5 but i didn't want to trade so i went bishop d7 and after rook c1 i really realized my position was not at all pleasant rook c1 is a very very good move and the idea is just sort of you get out of this this diagonal in some positions which might not seem very relevant what is kind of relevant in some positions if you ever want to play b4 and you also prepare d5, because now your knight would be defended in the case that you ever do prepare b4. And you're also threatening c5 in some positions. So rook c1 I thought was a very good move. Here I played rook e8. I'm threatening to play e5. But usually you want to keep your rook on f8, right? Because then you can play f5 later. But here I had to make that concession. Here they, they went for d5, knight b8. And here they went for b4, going for their plan. And I thought all of this was very sensible by my opponent. Here I went for a5. And here I was hoping they would play a3 because b5 seems to lock up the queen side after this move b6. But yeah, they just have to realize white black does not have enough time for this with knight d4 and knight c6 coming. So fortunately, my opponent did realize this. But on the move a3, I was planning to go takes. Oops, not there. Sorry. I was planning to go takes, takes and knight a6. And for example, if they play this move queen b3, c5, I thought was giving me a lot of play. And here I thought that I would be better because I have the open file. I kind of have, after this, I kind of have like some Benko Gambit type counterplay with the open file. My bishop's way better than theirs. And I was correct in evaluating I'm better here. But they went for b5, which is unfortunate because it's the best move. Here I went for e5. Takes, takes. My opponent went for knight d4. Here I saved my bishop. Maybe I should go for knight d7. But again, I can't trade here. I'm against a lower rated player. So I went for bishop c8 castles and yeah here i'm much worse so this is the worst position i think i've had all game it's around plus 1.5 and i have to think about ideas so basically my whole idea in this position was i somehow have to prove that these are queenside weaknesses and to do that i was thinking about trying to first develop my pieces so the idea was if i can trade off some some amount of pieces then these are probably going to be weak with my knights attacking them so ideally i want to trade these two bishops and it might seem weird why I would want to trade those two bishops when this bishop doesn't look that good, but this bishop is really bad. So I'm going to go for knight d7, and after bishop f3, I went for knight e5. I'm threatening to take one of these, and yeah, I would also enjoy getting some pieces off the board. And here my opponent went for knight d5, which I thought was the pretty much first mistake. I think here bishop e2 is probably more solid, and I really don't have anything productive to do. If my opponent played bishop e2, I was thinking about moves like c6, but... Yeah, again here, I don't think white has to do anything drastic. Just go like bishop, each, uh, bishop h2, and then slowly black can't really do anything here. When said knight d5, my opponent starts to force the issue, which is exactly what I wanted because I don't think that white has the ability to force the issue here. Here went knight takes f3, takes here, and I went for knight d4, so I'm threatening knight d2. I'm also looking to come into the c5 square. My opponent went... Uh, queen d1 and here i really didn't expect queen d1 here b6 was giving me a lot of problems and i really had no idea what i was going to do on b6 now while you do allow this he would take here in that position so that can't be good for me so here i was planning to go for c uh, b6 and after knight b5 i couldn't see how i was surviving here now the line given by the engine is goes like this takes knight c7 and after something like knight takes e3 f takes e3 and here, okay, even this move, bishop d7 is bad because he can take, take, and then fork me again. So yeah, this would be horrible. Here I have to go for this move, rook a7, and yeah, here I'm probably just losing. But thankfully my opponent didn't see that. b6 was an incredibly strong move. Here after queen d1, I went for this move, bishop e6. Now if b6, I can just, I think, take here, and after knight b5, I can take here. So this would be probably about equal, but this is, again, still what my opponent should have gone for. Instead, they went for f3, and after knight c5 again probably this is the last chance to go for b6 but after here i finally get rid of their chance to go for b6 and i was so excited to stop b6 that i kind of just missed that here i have knight takes b3 here and g5 which would be very nice for example if this move bishop g3 you can go for takes takes and win the pawn so i didn't even see that 
But uh, yeah, I was just so excited to get rid of the B6 as a possibility. And here I was also a little bit frustrated because my opponent is 1100. Like I feel like I should just destroy them. Now, I didn't have any knowledge that they were actually secretly quite a strong player. But yeah, here I was a little bit getting annoyed. I was like, yeah, they're kind of making the game kind of kind of like equal. But at this, I mean, kind of uh, difficult. But at this point, I knew I was probably around equal. And I liked my position because I had the bishop here. And they are eyeing the queen side. So I think the transformation from back here to here, clearly I've caught up on development. My knight found a good square and they lost their light squared bishop. So I think I have achieved a few of my goals here. So after knight b3, knight d7. Here a4, and yeah, here this is clearly just a blunder. And take a few seconds to see if you can find the move. And yeah, I found the move pretty quickly. But yeah, here after a4, I was like, okay, thank you. Thank you, you finally made a bad move. I was waiting for that because my opponent had played so good. So yeah, props to my opponent. You played really well. And hey, your 1100 rating is 100% not accurate. So here I went for c6. And yeah, here my opponent, if they do this, they are simply just losing this pawn. This pawn is falling no matter what. So they went for knight c3, I took here. Here they went rook e1. And here I went for knight e5, and after bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, my opponent went for e4. Here I went for bishop g3, and after rook e3, my opponent, I went bishop f4. And from this point on, I actually don't entirely remember the game. So I, after the tournament ended, I went to this lead chess study, and I put in all my games. And for some reason, I can't remember the la like the nearest game I played. So like I remembered all the other games. But this move, I think this game was like at least like 80 moves from here. Now I am up a pawn in this position and I'm winning the exchange. So you would think it would be easy, but my opponent really fought back. I ended up having to sack the exchange back to be two pawns up in a queen and rook end game. And then I sacked a pawn and a queen to trade queens. And then I got into a rook end game up a pawn, but I had an outside passer. And apparently it was winning the whole time, but it was very, 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 very difficult to win. And especially under low time. And when I finally won, I was like, Oh my god, thank you. Like, this 1100 really gave me a run for my money for a whole zero rating points for me. But yeah, so I think that at, at the end of this tournament, I got third place, which was as good as I could have done after round four. So I, run, I won round five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that was pretty nice. But again, yeah, I was kind of disappointed, especially especially in round two when I was against the top seed and I had all those chances. It was really unfortunate not to capitalize on any of them and even to blunder that drawn end game and then against in the round one against the like around a 2000 rated player for him to just completely outplay me was was really bad by me but yeah I mean I can't be too mad at that game because my opponent kind of just did did play a really really nice game but yeah the round round four game was very disappointing so yeah in the end yeah I got third place again this is like the fourth or third time I think I got third place in this tournament I just pretty much always get third place on this tournament regardless of who's playing regardless if i'm supposed to get second or first or fourth i think i just usually get third and yeah so this was my nationals event so now i've played a few tournaments uh after this event which i think i might be covering uh some heartbreaking ones unfortunately but yeah that's the end of my coverage of this tournament if you guys liked it please remember to leave a like and subscribe and i will see you guys in future videos